Hello Dr. Humans, welcome back to the channel and today's video which is all about how to manage your time in your long case. So we get 12 precious minutes to present our opening statement, the history, the examination, our closing statement and our issues list before the examiners cut us off entirely. And this can be heartbreaking, right? You could be the best doctor on planet earth and fail your long case simply because you didn't get through it on time. And if the examiners do have to cut you off or move you along, it can really upset your flow and your confidence, which can then impact on how you come across in your discussion. So bad timing can destroy us on exam day. And so today I wanted to give you four tips to help you get through your loan case on time for the exam win. So tip number one, get to your social history by eight minutes. Now this works really well, but of course it depends on the structure you're using. So when I say get to the social history by eight minutes, I'm working through the typical format of having an opening statement, history of presenting complaint, medical conditions, miscellaneous section, and then the social history, which comes right before the examination. So I'm really getting to the section before the examination by eight minutes. So that may or may not be the social history for you, but for most people, that's the social history segment. And because you wanna get there by eight minutes, it's important to start making decisions around the seven minute mark. So typically opening statement will take a minute or less, then you're onto their main problem, followed by the medical issues. Then when it hits the seven minute mark, you have to understand I have one minute left to get to my social history and that means you must take stock of what you would like to say to the examiners in that one minute time slot. So there might be a fair bit to say or you might be on track. Now if there's a fair bit to say in this section, I want you just to give me the salient points. Just give me the highlights. What are the main things that need to be said here so that the examiner knows that you took a good history? So this is not about diving into things in detail, this is about salient points. And a really great thing to do here, if you do feel like there's a lot to say and you're worried that the highlights might not be doing things justice. I would signal this to the examiners by saying something like, in the interest of time, I will now list their remaining active and non-active medical issues, as well as the remaining medications that I've not yet accounted for or something like that. And this might also be where you cover things like adherence or psychosocial issues as well. So work through your structure, decide what still needs to be said at that seven minute mark and let the examiners know that you're conscious of time. So the key thing here is that signpost. In the interest of time, I will now discuss whatever it is, right? Just so the examiner knows that you understand you've got to get through some stuff and that's absolutely fine. If they want to ask you more information about those things, they can come back to that in the discussion. That's okay. Tip number two, know what's important. Now this is easier said than done, but it's absolute gold. So I've just told you to get to your social history by eight minutes, but you might be saying, Christine, how do I do that, right? These patients have about 90 medical conditions. How do I know what to give details on and what to treat as more of a salient point? And this is a great question. And what this really comes down to is making sure that you address the patient's main concerns, as well as tease out the details of the most life-limiting morbidities or the morbidities that are causing the most impact on the patient. So what I would do right at the start, especially if you have someone who's got a lot of comorbidities, I would make sure that you know the answer to the magic wand question. So the magic wand question is where you ask the patient, if I had a magic wand and I could take one problem away for you, what would that problem be? That's gonna be the patient's key problem. Now, sometimes that's a medical condition, but more often than not, that'll be a symptom, right? something that's driving them nuts, or maybe it's something to do with their functional independence, something like that. Um, and in the long cases when you're practicing, you're often seeing inpatients, but on exam day, it's usually stable outpatients that you're seeing. So although they have a lot of morbidities, they might not have a screamingly obvious acute pressing issue that you can talk about in the history of presenting complaint. So this magic wand question is key here also because it sets us up by starting with the patient-centered issue and branching out from there. And often the patient-centered issue links directly to a medical issue, which you can then go on to talk about so for example, a patient might have neuropathic pain in their feet as their main issue from their perspective, 
on a background of diabetes. So you would explore the symptom they have, keeping an open mind as to the differential, right? You don't want to just put it down to diabetes necessarily. But then, of course, there's a natural link there into discussing their diabetes. Then from there, you want to pick out a few medical conditions based on their severity, their impact, their life-threatening nature. Do they threaten independence? Do they threaten longevity? And focus in on those. And if you've done this, you've discussed the patient-centered issue, you have delivered two or three major morbidities in detail, by the time you get to the seven minute mark, if you do have 12 medical conditions to discuss, that's okay because you just have to prioritize, go through the salient points because you've covered the main things already. The examiners wouldn't expect you to cover 20 medical conditions in that time, okay? So as long as you've prioritized, you'll be very, very safe. Tip number three, streamline your closing statement. If you have done a really good job with your opening statement, you can afford to streamline your closing statement and get right into your issues list. The issues list must take priority here because the examiners are comparing your issues list to their issues list directly, right? They're not really comparing your closing statement to very much at all. So the closing statement at a minimum is a bit of a signpost that we are now about to talk about our issues, right? It gives the examiners the idea that you're now wrapping up so they can relax. So of course, if you're winning and you want to do a bit of a mic drop closing statement, that's totally fine. But I want you to be flexible here and understand that if you're running out of time, you need to get to your issues list. And make sure that when you practice, you are able to give just a summary snapshot of your patient in one or two sentences so that you can do this if you're short of time on exam day. So a bare minimum skeleton closing statement might sound something like this. Mrs. Smith is a 65-year-old woman from home alone in rural Victoria with the active issue of dyspnea for investigation on a background of type 2 diabetes, ischemic cardiomyopathy and rheumatoid arthritis. I have identified the following issues for discussion. Now, of course, you can beef out your closing statement on a good day. I'm not telling you to just do this every time. But what I am trying to say is that if you're in a bind, just keep that closing statement just super brief. Use it as a signpost and then shine as you deliver your issues list. And tip number four, another awesome time-saving hack is to nest conditions within other conditions. So when you first sit down with the patient and you've got their medication list and you're creating a list of medical problems, before you start taking the history, have a look at those problems and see where you can nest them together. So for example, hypertension can go into cardiovascular risk factors or it could go under the umbrella of chronic kidney disease. Gout could go into chronic kidney disease or alcohol excess or even cyclosporin use. There's also other things like obesity where um, obstructive sleep apnea might be nested in there or osteoarthritis of the knees, hypertension again could go in there. So try and zoom out and see where you can nest a condition as a complication of another condition. That's a really great way to streamline discussing the medical issues. It sounds so professional and it will save you time. So those were my four tips for improving your timing in your long case for the exam win. Go ahead, put those tips into practice this week and let me know how it goes in the comments below. And don't forget to check out our entire long case playlist here on YouTube. Thank you so much for joining me today and I'll see you again soon. Bye.